Hey everybody, good evening. Dr. Incompetent here, and... Well, let's play some Caves of Cud. Hunting. Slayer. Aster. Good evening, everybody. It's so awesome to see you here. Oh, perfect, Aster. Okay, so you're streaming more regularly? Awesome. I'm doing I'm doing so well, Aster. Thanks for asking. I hope your streaming is going beautifully. In the future there will be someone who will look up that IP address, I bet. <clears throat> I bet indeed. All right. So let's go ahead and continue. Um, hey, hey, Trisha, good evening. How you doing? So we are our level five true kin Praetorian. And we are at Joppa because we just turned in the very first quest. So last time was my first time ever playing this game. And, um... Oh, continue. Oh, okay, great. Here we go. Continue. Press space. Where's my game? Wait a minute. You have no existing save games. What happened? Uh-oh. Uh oh Did I lose my save? You, you guys just saw my save. I wonder if I just pushed the wrong button. But I just tried to click to load my save and nothing happened. And then I clicked the back arrow... I wonder if because the, the game updated, so maybe my character was no longer valid because of the patch or something? I really don't know. I have been enjoying this, Aster. Thank you for asking. It is really interesting. I mean, there's so much to learn here. Um, so, well, I think maybe it just updated and I lost my character. Anyway, so that means we start a new one. Um, so anyway, here's the deal. Last time we were a true kin, and I've been talking to people, and they have all said, um, yeah, you're right, Aster, it shouldn't be the case. I don't know if, like, maybe you just shouldn't click this back button, but I, I thought, like, I click load and nothing happens, so I was like, well, maybe I should go back and then my character will be there, but I don't know. I could have misclicked, or it is in early access, so it could just be some kind of bug I have no idea um, but it's totally fine we weren't that far so and it gives me a chance to try a mutated human which everyone was suggesting is a better start anyway so I'm gonna do a mutated human um, I think so Aster it must be some kind of bug interface issue you're right uh, and that's what it feels like so let's try a mutant um, so what I like to do is uh, I'm going to build something similar to what I did last time, which is just like a kind of well-rounded character because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to min-max too much. And then I'm going to boost up uh, strength and toughness and willpower and strength. And then good. So we're really strong. Um, and we have some just overall decent stats. And let's just see how this goes. Next step. Um, okay, so this is new to me because before, um, like I said, I was a true kin. So now I get to choose between these different options. So there's uh, morphotypes, physical mutations, physical defects, Men, uh, defects, mental mutations, and mental defects. And it's kind of funny because it's like, why would you want to pick a mental defect? You know what I mean? Um, Slayer, uh, the plan is until for two hours, maybe a little longer. Imhala, good evening, my friend. How are you doing? Hey, hey JR, how's it going? Good to see you. 
Ah, extra points for stuff with defects. So that's what it is. So I can take a defect and then it gives me more points to attribute elsewhere. Cool. Thank you, Aster, for clearing that up. Actually, that was my first inclination because I'm seeing these big minuses over here. Um, and so uh, let's look at this. Chimera means... Well, I don't know what it means. Um, Esper unstable genome. Um, is there a way to get information on this? Not really. Uh, physical mutations. Okay, so now if I click on this, it does give me some information. These... Oh, here we go. Unstable genome says there's something. You gain an extra mutation, but it doesn't manifest right away. Whenever you gain a level, there's a 33% chance that your genome destabilizes and you choose from three random mutations. Interesting. You love dark mode? You mean you have Twitch in dark mode? Or you like just going into the game without knowing what's going to happen? Um, okay. So... This takes three points to get the unstable genome. Oh, okay, JR. That makes sense. That's cool. Um, Chimera is physical only. Esper is mental only. And unstable is both wild and fun. I see. Okay, so I'm going to go with... Yeah, unstable. Just for fun. But I don't know why I would put more than one point in it because it doesn't appear to be changing anything over here. So anyway, I'm gonna do that for now. And then, um, so adrenal control says, I can regulate your body's release of adrenaline. You can increase your body's adrenaline flow for 20 rounds and you get 20 quickness and other physical mutations gain a rank. Okay, that's kind of cool. Or I could get a beak. Um, Oh, hey, Hydra King, what's up? You know what? Um, oh, JR, it's going awesome, friend. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Um, I, I have XCOM 2, and I haven't booted it up. But um, is the WOTC, is that a, a DLC for the game? I'd love to play it, too. XCOM are some of my favorite. Like, I love the original... XCOM game and XCOM Terror from the Deep, like back from the 90s. I played those a lot. Um, and I like the reboots as well, but I haven't played much into two. War of the Chosen, it's a DLC. Oh, that sounds awesome, Hydra King. I actually might give that a shot. Thanks for the recommendation. Um, so I could get a beak. Now look how good this is. So I Me too, Aster. Um, yeah, I love tactical turn-based um, games, and I like fighting them aliens, so that sounds fun. That's a great idea. Now look at this. So I could give myself a beak, which would give me plus one ego, but and then I would occasionally peck at my opponents, but I also get plus 200 reputation with birds, which I think is hysterical. They, like, recognize you as one of their own. Um, I could get claws which would give me big old claws um, to let me dig through a wall. And they're also short blade class natural weapon that deals one dice to base damage to non-walls. Ah, uh, you know what, JR? I've been looking at Rust. I haven't actually um, bought that yet, but that does look fun. That, that might be one for sure. Um, Carapace would give me a a durable carapace um, and so I would get plus three armor value minus two um, dodge value heat resistance cold resistance um, and then I can tighten my carapace to receive double the armor value bonus but I would dodge even less Oh, that sounds sweet. That's a great idea, JR. Um, however, I can't wear armor. But then tortoises would love me. So that's pretty interesting. Um, 
<laughs> corrosive gas generation. You release a short burst of corrosive gas around yourself, um, and it's got 40 round cooldown. This is hilarious. Uh, you basically have bad gas that is acid. So that's kind of funny. Yes, Slayer, I have played this before. Um, oh, floating orb means you need have no need for torches, Aster? That's actually really attractive. Slayer, I have played before, but only a little bit. I completed, like, the first quest with my character, um, and I'm having to re-roll because it just instantly vanished when I tried to re reload it um, a moment ago. Uh... <laughs> hey, Brat Vulture. There's my man with the RuneScape clan. What's up, man? How you doing? No, I haven't joined the clan. There you go. There you go, Hydro King. It is acid. All right, so let's go ahead and um, look up to... I could get night vision, I guess, which would also be like a torch, maybe. Um... Wow, look at all this stuff here. Brought Vulture, this is called Caves of Cud. It's a uh, roguelike sci-fi story-driven game in early access on Steam. It is not RuneScape, not at all, sir. Hmm... I mean, I could sit here and read all of this forever. Two-headed. Two-hearted? You have two hearts. Yeah, Aster, I agree with you. There is so much to the game, and um, the the lore and the character creation is, is incredibly deep. All right, so double muscled you are possessed of hulking strength that sounds really good 15% chance to daze your opponents on a successful melee attack for 2-3 to three rounds okay we're going to get double muscle we're also going to go ahead and um, have multiple arms um, maybe, I don't know. That looks really good, though. Um, I can see in the dark. Let's get night vision. Uh, and then... Let's see, so, we, right now, we're double muscled, so we're, like, super, super strong. And, um, we have two hearts. And then, also, um, we have night vision... Nick man, hello my friend. How you doing this evening? I'm just trying a little caves of cud. I'm just laughing hysterically. This is a uh, roguelike science fiction, like futuristic setting with a very lore-driven world. So it's like a roguelike. It, it kind of feels like you're playing Dwarf Fortress mixed with Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup mixed with Fallout. But even then, that doesn't quite get everything. But that's that's like the quick Cliff Notes version. But I've only played this a little bit myself. Um, I can get some fur, which is funny. I could also just go ahead and get, like, um, Clairvoyance or uh, Mental Mirror. Or... Sense Psychic. Teleport Other. That sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, let's get that. Alright, so... I'm picking mutations for my character. Okay, I'm, I'm starting out as a... Like I said, this is a futuristic world, so think Fallout, think mutations, I suppose. Um, and I'm picking a bunch of crazy... Um, Mutations. Oh, take some defects so I can get some more mental stuff. Okay. I, 
I could become albino, amphibious. Um, I could be carnivorous, uh, cold-blooded. Look at this. This just means, like, I involuntarily release electromagnetic pulses deactivating robots and artifacts around myself. I, I think this actually sounds good. However, my problem is, um... Does this, like... Will this aggro people in the town? In Joppa? Like, if I just release electricity, am I going to hurt townsfolk and then cause them to be aggressive? Or is it not a big deal? You cannot wear shoes because you have hooks for feet. Uh, makes sense. Interesting. Um, oh, okay. Well, then we'll take that. Um, oh, you can only take one defect. Okay, I see. I was going to take, like, a bunch. But it looks like I can't... I can only take one. And then let's take a mental... Oh, no, you can only take one defect overall, it looks like. I see. Um, well, then maybe we should um, get rid of this and take a bigger mental... Yeah, Stunning Force looks pretty good, or, um... I could identify artifacts, I could peer into the future. Holy smokes. You manipulate light. You produce ambient light, which you can focus into a laser, which... That's hilarious. Um... Ego projection. This sounds hilarious. Um, confusion. Hmm. Wow. I mean, there's so much going on here, it's crazy. Let's try this. Time dilation. That seems good. Slow down time, right? Okay, great. Alright, so we have chosen our mutations, and now we need to select a subtype. Um, so... <laughs> yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna look for something that is strength... Yeah... Hey, Dylan. How's it going, my friend? How you doing? I think this looks good. Marauder, plus two strength, axe, dismember, charge, butchery. So you start with butchery, which is already good. Charge seems good. I can dismember things, and I get even more strength, which is great. I'm going for just a very, very hulking, melee-driven character, if you can't tell. Um, yeah, butchery, butchery seems good because I can, like, eat animals faster. Also, um, I happen to have just finished the first four comics in the Annihilation series, where it's about Drax the Destroyer, and so this character kind of feels like... I mean, Drax doesn't use axes, he uses, like, those knives, but still. Um, this, this is good. Let's be a Marauder. Alright, so we're a mutated human Marauder. Look at how strong we are. Um, and we get, like... Unstable genomes. Yeah, I treated myself to um, Marvel Unlimited for a little bit to just try out and read some comics. There's just so much to read. <clears throat> Alright, so we're going to be Dr. Incompetent. And here we go. Yeah, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep it up, Aster, but it, like, I got, like, the first month for half price or something, so I figured let's just read as much as I can, make, make my eyes bleed with comics. It's a good plan. All right, we're going to start with Joppa again, um, because I didn't really do that much. 
may the ground shake, but the six days still never tumble. Boom. All right. So, I believe that this is going to be the same information each time. I don't know. Um, but let's look at this. On the 28th of Uba'ut, you arrive at the oasis hamlet of Joppa, along the far rim of Mograi, the Great Salt Desert. All around you, moisture farmers tend to groves of Viridian water vine. There are huts wrought from rock salt and brine stock. On the horizon, Cud's jungle strangle chrome steeples and rusted archways to the earth. Further and beyond, the fabled spindle rises above the fray and pierces the cloud-riven sky. Perfect. All right. So, um, this is what the game looks like. And here I am down here at the bottom. Now, it's similar. I'm going to turn, um, but uh, Butcher Corpses is on. Okay, perfect. Uh, dismember. I don't even know. So I can turn on charge or dismember. Oh my god. I have to select a direction for that. That's crazy. Uh, we'll think about that later. These are our combat abilities, so we're not doing any of those while we're in town. Um, so I think this person um, has a quest for me. Yes. Okay, so this is Mehmet is the one that gave me this quest for Red Rock before. And um, I will do as you ask, and we get to go do that. Um, and so we will. Now, there is, uh, you know, I can auto-explore the town and find all of these pieces of lore. Which, this is, um, this tells you some of the story. And, uh, for example, this is a painted, sturdy floor cushion. So this sounds great. I take a seat on this. However, um, it tells a story. It, it is painted with a scene from the life of the ancient sultan, Gadadis IV. In 3323 BR, Gadadis IV pillaged all of uh, Sazodim, sol uh, soldiering together the children of Pariah's and worms, or soldering together, I guess, is perhaps the way to say that. She became known as the Pest of Sizodum. Uh So, okay. It cannot break. Now, the cool thing is you compile this lore in your journal, so you can look at it later. And this is just me auto-exploring. I found another cushion that tells about another ancient sultan, but this one's name is Kudates. Um, and in 2583, Kudades won a decisive victory against the combined forces of Tapper Palace at the bloody Battle of Nakesh. As a result of the battle, Nakesh was so rife with stray portals to other places and times that it was renamed the Perpetual Marsh. Okay, so now, just by um, looking at this piece of lore, I have figured out the location of Tapur, which now we know about this location of historic uh, sites in my journal. And now we got a new quest called Visit Tapur. Um, oh, perfect, Aster. Yes, I am so welcome to comic book su series suggestions. So that's perfect. Thank you for that. Um, so this is something that I'm noticing as well, I think I forgot about this, but basically I can get quests just from these uh, items that I discover, these artifacts that have historical scenes on them. So I'm going to just make sure that I look around to get all these quests. Here's the village elder right here. Oh no, you're good. Here's an engraved bed. Now this is, like I think I mentioned this before, I can't help but feel inspiration from the procedurally gener generated histories of Dwarf Fortress when I play a game like this. Um, Crowen, what's up, my friend? How you doing? 
you just had your Esper die in your own game and you noticed that I was playing, I am playing. I had to reboot, Crowan, and now I am a mutant, uh, and I picked the, uh, like, the crazy genome mutant. So I get, like, random mutations to choose from, so I'm excited to have, like, a, a completely uncontrolled experience. And see how much fun that is. So this is, um, Gedatis the Fourth. I'm sorry to hear your character died. That sucks. My character was killed by the load screen. So we're, we're starting a new one. Um, let's see. He laid waste to all of Mava Roost, soldering together the children of urchins and mysterious strangers. She became known as the Bane of Mava. And see, like, I don't know, um, what is happening here if the lore is different every time or if it's generated like Dwarf Fortress. But either way, I love it. I love all these stories. Um, Chris, good evening, my friend. Where I'm at, we're getting absolutely hammered by frozen rain and ice. Um, and, yeah, schools have been canceled all over. So we've got, like, some level 2 snow emergency here. <laughs> so it's a good time to stay inside and play a game about the desert. And pretend that it's not an icy nightmare outside. Now, I believe, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, because you know more about the game. Thank you, Crow, and it's randomly generated. Okay, perfect. Um... You can't figure out how to make prayers in Graveyard Keeper. You need faith and you need um, paper. And you can make pigskin into pigskin paper. And then you can use like, I think maybe it's sand or something else to clean the paper into white paper in Graveyard Keeper. Yeah, that's where I'm at, Dylan. It's freezing outside. It's unreal. So, at the bottom of this pl this information plate here, it says plus 60 reputation with the cult of Gedatis the Fourth. So, by looking at this artifact and reading this story, is this telling me that I just gained 60 reputation 